All right, now that we have our package kind of set up, it builds correctly, it kind of passes our command check, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of extra flair and a little bit of extra continuous integration and all these other things that are really modern that are really great. So again, we're gonna be using the use this package. So again, if you don't have that loaded up, uh, again, we are in our RStudio project. So we again can see all the fun things you can do with the use this package. So there's use vignette. So let's say we wanna add a vignette to our package. We say best vignette ever. Okay, so we see a vignettes folder uh, pops up. We see best vignette ever uh, that RMD is created. So I tend to put underscores and all this kind of stuff. So here we would change the title. So this is my vignette. Again, everything's in our markdown. Vignette author, it's me. Uh, and then you also definitely want to change the title of that area for the vignette. The, the difference here is this is the title of the document. This is the vignette index entry. So I want to show you, for example, on one of my packages, get, uh, FSLR or FOSLR, vignettes, DTI data in FSLR, working with data in FSLR. These are the titles and the vignette in entries. But if you wanted those to be different, this is the actual thing that pops up on the web page when you click it. So if you want the title to be different, then this is the vignette entry right here. This is the title. So again, we're going to keep it as is and just save it. And we'll see again that the vignettes folder is added there with a the little git ignore. Okay. Not only that, it did some other nice things. So we've exported some functions, but we haven't imported any functions right now. And we definitely haven't added anything into suggests. So one, it's saying the vignette builder should be knitter. Before it used to be sweave. Again, if you use the use this package, it takes care of all this for you, and it says suggests knitter or R markdown. So suggests is a field that pretty much says you don't need to have these packages installed to use this functionality of this package, but to build the vignettes in the examples, you need these packages. So let's say, for example, also we want to use uh, another function in our package. So for example, let's say, so I know, I believe Tibble has data underscore frame. So again, suggests we don't need them installed to run the actual functionality, but examples and vignettes and all the other things we still do. So we're going to take out some of these arguments. So as that data frame x equals x y equals y, or r equals r, and then print head at, uh, x. Okay, so printer is going to be a little bit different. So silly printer function. What you want in the second column. What you want in the first column. So again, on a previous video, I did say I was going to show you the output of the help function or the hello function. So hello, again, I use this code link print. So again, this made the, the text a little bit different. And if you click it, it goes to the help file of print. Okay, so return a tibble. So let's return x. So examples, so printer x equals r norm 5 r equals r norm 5. Okay, I'm gonna save that. So now, we're using as underscore data underscore frame from the tibble package. Let's say, here we're being very explicit, but if you didn't have tibble loaded and you tried to run this, you would get an error. So we have to be explicit, import from tibble as underscore data underscore frame. So this is telling r that when I run this package, so let's see actually what happens to the namespace. So again, the vignettes will be rebuilt every time. So if one of your vignettes is very long and costly, then you might want to change some options. You might want to uncheck that box with the Roxygen to build vignettes. Now, let's go to the namespace. Now we see this import from directive. So tibble as underscore data underscore frame. 
that's coming from here. So I'm saying from this package, please import this function. So whenever I run as underscore data underscore frame, it understands that the tibble package is the one where it's coming from. That, that being said, if I want to use as underscore data underscore frame anywhere else, it's totally fine to do that. It'll assume that it's from the tibble package. I only have to put this import directive there once. You can also import a entire an entire package, which will allow you to have all the functions of that package at your disposal. Uh, I tend to do the import from directive because if th some things move around, it does give me some indication that this function is not exported from this package, but there is no real big problem doing this other than times where functions from dplyr, for example, and tibble may conflict. So then you would pro you have to use the double colon operator to say, I want the version of this function from this package explicitly. But again, unless you're importing a lot of functions, a lot of packages that have conflicting, it's not a big deal. So now we've told this R package that you want to be able to use tibble as underscore data dot frame functionality, but you haven't told it when we install the package, which is in the description file, when we install it, that you definitely need to have this. So, so use package, package, uh, and then type equals imports. So we're going to say, I want to use the tibble package. What is going to happen? We are going to make some changes to our description file. So it says refer to functions with tibble underscore un or colon colon fun. That is uh, just a very safe, very uh, good coding practice, but it's not always 100% necessary. I think it's a good thing to get in the habit of, but again, we're, not, we're gonna gloss over that a little bit here. So again, there are three different types of fields for the most part that you really use. Imports, things you, packages you want access to their functions for your package to be able to run. Suggests, these packages aren't essential for your package to run all the functionality, but it is essential for the examples, vignettes, and maybe unit tests that we'll talk about in a minute. And then there's a depends field. So depends is kind of the strongest of all of them. Right? So depends is you have to have this function to run my package, but what it'll do is essentially run like library that package before your package is loaded. So if I said depends tibble, then it would have it would be essentially saying library tibble and then library library tester. That's what depends. So it's very heavy handed. It also loads up all the functionality, which can be kind of costly for the loading of your package. And also this is impossible and very bad. You don't have, you have a package only in one spot, either depends or imports or suggests, but never in both of them or all three of them. So if you say, I actually use some of the functionality that are in my package, in the code, not just to create the vignettes, then you have to move this from suggests to imports. Okay. So again, import, you need it to run the code, suggest you need it to run the examples and the vignettes and everything else. But if you actually need any of the functionality for these to run the code, you need to put it in imports. So now you are saying, I need this package to be downloaded and installed to your machine when you're making a package. But the namespace is telling you what is actually imported, what packages are actually loaded up and required. And so there is a quick check to make sure that if you have functionality here, it's got to be imported at some point. Otherwise, it gives you an indication like, hey, you said you needed this package, but it doesn't seem like you're using it anywhere. What gives? OK, now we're going to clean and rebuild. And we will show you that the printer function works just fine. And the nice thing about having things in our studio and, and Roxygen, I can hit Command Enter, Control Enter, and it'll run this functionality. Ah, so not the right function to be using. I should be using data underscore frame. So here's the problem. I said add tibble import as underscore data underscore frame, but I'm running data frame here. So what's going to happen when I try to run this code? It's going to run, but let's say I actually restart my R session, start it anew. None of the packages are loaded like they were before. Oh, I can't find that function. That's because we haven't in the namespace said, I want data underscore frame. I want as underscore data underscore frame. So we have to just adjust that. And let's, let's keep it as is. 
and then I want to run our command check. So what this should tell us is that, hey, like this little uh, warning symbol here is saying, no symbol named data underscore frame and scope saying, hey, like I don't think you have access to this function. It's trying to give you a little soft warning there. So after we change this and do the correct importing, everything will go fine, but I want to show you what happens if something's a little screwed up because this will happen very frequently in your early R package development. So it checks the code for possible problems. So it says printer no visible global function defined for data underscore frame or head. So even though when you download R and have no packages installed, the base utilities and the um, stats packages are already loaded in and libraryed in whenever you start your package development. If you need to import anything other than the base package, any of the functions that aren't in just base, you have to, you should put the import from directives here. And although these are notes and seem somewhat benign, if you try to submit to CRAN, they are not going to like it and they definitely will not accept anything with errors. Right? So here, this is what happened. It said an error happened. I tried to run your example and I got the error that we had before. So it gives you some idea that, oh, the Everything's not configured correctly. If someone goes to try to run my code from installing this package, things aren't going to go so well for them. We have fixed it. We're going to clean. We can clean and rebuild. Rock, uh, Dev tools will document this with Roxygen. The namespace will correctly now say, "I need the data frame function." And if we try print, everything's going to go like we wanted and according to plan. And if we go to check it, everything should come out fine. So. Recap a little bit, the use underscore package functionality is really good. You can change what type of things you want to use. If you want to do things for suggests, say, hey, I only need this function if you want to run my examples or my vignette. But if you actually use it with code, put it in imports. And we are going to use import from or import directives to say, I want to use functions from these other packages that I've just that I've said in the description you need, right? And those uh, import directives will then be in the namespace. So Again, we haven't put the utils head, so we're still going to get that note. So one thing we're going to add in here, import from utils head. So again, you import from the package, and then you could have, let's say dist. Dist is another uh, function from utils. So you can list multiple functions here that you're importing from, and it will create individual entries in the namespace file. So again, we still have this note, and that note is because we didn't import the head function, and everything's uh, just fine for now, after we fixed all this. Now, what I did here is I imported utilities. I imported these two functions. I told my namespace that I wanted them, but what happened? It wouldn't install. It said dist is not export. Well, that's probably one of the problems. I needed a dist. So let's clean and install. So that that was an example of why I use why I use import from. So that when I go to check this package, it's going to say, "Hey, you're trying to grab something from a package. That function doesn't exist. That function isn't exported." So now I'm going to check the package. I'm going to run all my fun stuff here. But note, I said in here, which will come out in the namespace, that I want this package. I never told the description that I need this package to load things up. So that should give me another warning or a little piece of information when I run our command check. Mm -hmm. So in order to fix that, again, I'm just going to say use package, but I'm going to wait for our command check to finish. So uh, that might not be the case always with utils or stats, but any other package, for example, I will show you, like, let's say, I want to import from dplyr, select, and then run check package again. We will, I will show you here. The namespace should be fixed. Oh, sorry. So check doesn't actually uh, regenerate. Doesn't regenerate. Uh, namespace dependency not required. Right, so I'm going to clean and rebuild it. And then I'm going to check it. So what does that mean? Namespace dependency not required. That seems very technical. Pretty much what that's saying is, you told me you needed dplyr, right? 
You never told me in the description file that dplyr was even something I needed to install when we installed the package. So you're telling me two different pieces of information. I'm stopping this check now because I want you to break so that you help fix this before you try to send this out. So again, if we wanted to use dplyr, we would just say use package dplyr. And again, we can, it's from the use this package. Doo -doo. And now it's in there and everything's great. So that's a little bit more about importing, exporting, and now we're on our way to being able to use other functions from other packages and really making something a little bit more powerful.